Now, let's look at the real challenges for renewable energy and net zero emissions. A researcher with lots of experience in Australia and Europe has looked at addressing some big questions that so many in the energy debate always ignore. They are, what resources would be needed to replace all of our internal combustion vehicles with electric vehicles? And also, what resources would be needed to build enough renewable energy generation to replace all the electricity from fossil fuels? Big questions, and the answers are staggering and problematic. Here's the paper, and let's just take one example, one single resource and one use. The mass of lithium-ion batteries required to power the 1.39 billion electric vehicles proposed would be 282 million tonnes. Preliminary calculations show that global reserves, let alone global production, may not be enough to resource the quantity of batteries required. Seriously, we haven't got enough lithium now and might never be able to find enough. There's much more. Let me cross to Associate Professor Simon Michaud in Europe. Simon, great to talk to you. We wouldn't have enough lithium, you found, and you say there might be enough nickel to make all these batteries if we use most of it for that purpose, but there aren't enough known reserves of cobalt either. How dire is this problem? How big is this challenge? So I've done a calculation if we were to replace the existing system as you see it now, and it was all electric vehicles and hydrogen fuel cells. And I've based it around what the IEA has predicted to be the energy market shares in 20, uh, 2050. I've used a number of different battery chemistries uh, to, to show this. And the simple answer is we don't have enough of these metals. Um, we mine cobalt and lithium in relatively trace amounts at the moment, but we are, we are proposing to mine them in the same volumes that we mine copper or one of the uh, our ba base metals. And to do it quickly, current reserves, as stated by the US Geological Survey in 2022, show that they are not enough to produce one generation of renewable technology uh, uh, to phase out fossil fuels. Now, remember, if we built all this stuff tomorrow, in 20 years, it all wears out and you've got to do it again. And that puts pressure on recycling. I'm also part of the recycling world. Recycling technology is not able to deliver as efficiently as policymakers would like to think. So we have a serious problem on our hands. The answer is what they think they're going to do is not going to work and a new plan will be required. That yep. new plan yep. needs to be discussed. Yeah, I'll get to that in a second, because you're talking about known reserves, and there are other problems there, of course. Where do you find these resources? Whether you can mine it or not? Whether other countries will trade it? And you've said that recycling doesn't really stack up. So th these are all physical problems you have to encounter. And, of course, there's, on top of that, then the cost of delivering all this. So I've not done any market um, analysis. I've tried to actually work at the physical material flows required, the, the physical number of vehicles required, the physical number of wind turbines required. Uh, I've left others to do market analysis. We'll, 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 left, uh, we'll leave the cost aside then, because as, as we all understand, the cost there would be eye-watering. Let's go on to generation then, because you have looked at electricity generation globally, and more than 80% yep. of that is reliant on fossil fuels. So can we physically... Are we physically capable of replacing all of that generation with renewable uh, generation? If so, what extent? How many solar farms, wind farms... Uh, hydroelectricity dams would we need? How big is that physical challenge? OK, so we're, we're looking at um, if 26,614 terawatt hours was generated in 2018, to do this, to actually electrify everything, we're talking about a 46,000 terawatt hour annual energy consumption worldwide. So we're talking about an energy system considerably larger than what we are looking at now. And we're going to do that with energy systems that are very uh, expensive and, and, and not, not as effective in terms of energy return on energy invested. Now, to do that, the uh, IEA has done a projection that they released fairly recently is in 2050, the energy split as they see it to, to phase out fossil fuels, 70% will come from wind and solar. So if you take that split, 
uh, let's say, uh, uh, where you've got a, a 70% share of onshore wind turbines at 30% of offshore, and if all wind turbines are three megawatts, and yes, you've got bigger megawatt uh, uh, systems, but in terms of a macro uh, scale, the, the amount of metal will be the same if you uh, adjust it for that. So we would need 1.47 uh, million wind turbines, that if there were three megawatts in capacity onshore, and 630,000 uh, turbines offshore. We would need, uh, if all solar panels were 450 megawatts in, in capacity, we would need 27.6 billion. Now, these numbers sound large, um, and, and they are. Uh, we've got 1.4 billion cars uh, in the global fleet, and then you've got the maritime fleet, and you've got the rail fleet. So we've got to resource all that somehow. Now, uh, we don't have the reserves in the ground, but we also don't have the manufacturing capacity in the global system to do that very quickly. And so the real problem is we're out of time, not just out of money, but we're also out of time. It's just uh, extraordinary. Simple it's, yeah. Sorry, simple answer sorry. is? Simple answer is we can't do it the way it is being planned, not even close. Exactly, which is where I want to finish because uh, you're in Finland uh, at the moment, working in Finland. We know in, in that country and many other countries in Europe they're using increasing amounts of nuclear and looking further to nuclear. Is nuclear the silver bullet? Obviously, there's going to be a mix and renewables will be part of that. But is nuclear the only way we can actually deliver the intensity of energy needs we require when it comes to uh, minimising emissions? So nuclear is, is um, uh, good stuff and we will certainly need it. One of my simulations was to look at can we expand the nuclear power plant fleet, uh, fleet fast enough? And the simple answer is no. So I, I looked at if we brought online 25 new nuclear power plants a year, every year from the year 2025 onwards, and I assumed that it took five years to build one, not what it does now, um, uh, could we expand the nuclear power plant fleet? fleet for, it's, it's about you know seven or eight percent of our global energy at the moment. Can we expand to not only to all energy uh, and all renewable energy as well? And so what you end up with is 76 years later, we get to about 60% of what is required in global delivery. And then we actually burn through all the existing uranium resources. Now, yes, we can go and find more. That's not a problem. Uh, what is a problem is how do we manage the stockpile of spent nuclear fuel that is now so large and requires power to manage? So the simple answer is nuclear cannot expand fast enough to be useful because all the, another problem that is not recognised here, peak oil could be in our past which existing systems are now in trouble and we need the after oil plan. The existing green plan is not going to work and nuclear cannot be the magic bullet to solve that problem. The simple answer is there are no simple answers. Thanks so much for joining us, yep. Simon. I appreciate it. OK. Associate Professor Simon Michaud there from uh, Europe. Uh, look, just those facts are just overwhelming, aren't they? Uh, you've got to address these facts. We've got so many politicians saying, don't worry, you've got this green dream happening. Australia's going to be a renewable energy superpower. There's the facts. The world simply can't do this the way it's being sold to us at the moment.